Okay, Coach Gibbs. Uh, first things first, welcome to beautiful Sandusky, Ohio. This facility is amazing, huh? <laughs> Unreal, right? Unreal. It is uh, second to none. I haven't been in a facility this nice. It's new, but it's massive. That's huge for social distancing, all the other things we got to do. But uh, who are you coaching here today? Uh, this morning, session one, I was here with my youngest boy, Caden, who's eight years old in the in the rookie division, and now I'm here with my oldest boy, who's 11, uh, Division Four. Okay. And uh, where do you guys live? We live in North Ridgeville. Okay. Part of the Medina Buckeye program. Yeah. Okay. So Buck, you're with Buckeye. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So, um, do you live in the Ridgeville district, or do you live in the Buckeye district? We live in the Ridgeville district, okay. yeah. But maybe you'll one way you'll you'll cross that bridge when you get well, there. Well, it's kind of a weird deal with me driving to BW every day. You know, I passed Olmstead Falls, so we've always been a part of the Olmstead Falls Club. And this year they're not having wrestling, so we really? jumped in with Buckeye, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and you, you know, you hear that some schools just there's the risk mitigation it's all over the place. Yeah, they're it? just you know, and it's it's fifty fifty in Ohio, right? Well, if you look in California, you look in New York, they're shutting stuff down just just cause right i mean they're really worried about it but um being a college head coach right when you look at it what is it like when you come here and i was talking to clint musser earlier <laughs> and you see some of the parents yelling at their kids how you would yell at your guys in the NCAA semifinals what is that like and what are your thoughts on that man it's tough so i'm learning all the time i talk to our our athletes parents all the time and um always looking for information always finding better ways to do it and i mean you you get you know how it is man you get into these matches but uh you just really try to take a step back and you want to make it fun for the kids um so getting them around their buddies is huge 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 so try not to be that dad but <laughs> sometimes it happens right but everything's got to be a positive pro positive experience for these kids you guys you know I look at BW and you guys are really on the upswing. You know, you, you. you're in Northeast Ohio. I, I, I checked the social media. I, I, you know, cover D2 way more than I cover D3. I would love to cover more more D3, so maybe we can talk about that. You but do that. getting you into the the events, though, like we don't even know what the schedule is going to look like. We have no idea what the season is going to look like. This could be your kids' only competition this year. What is it like knowing, keeping them going, and keeping them interested, and keeping your guys engaged who are 18 through 22 years old? What's it like keeping young guys engaged, young kids, young boys, and young men? What's it like keeping I them think engaged? The message is the same. Just trying to get them to improve each day. Try to try to get a little bit better. Um, putting the focus on the process and the development of, of them, and um, I think this is a great year for that. And really putting the focus on that, not the wins and the losses, but just how much better are we getting? How much better are we going to get every single day? And um, you know, right now our, our season says that we're going to start uh, January 23rd at the college level. So things aren't trending in the right direction, but uh, you know, we're going to stay positive with it. That's all we can do. <laughs> so many parents have unrealistic goals for their kids. You know, everybody thinks their kid is a D1 guy or girl. Um, and you're fighting that constantly in um, recruiting. You'll call a kid, I'm oh, not a D3 guy. Right, you're fighting that uphill battle constantly. You finally got a little relief now. You guys have are on a quiet period, not a dead period. So D two and D three are actually getting a little bit of. You're gaining a little momentum there, recruiting, right? Right, right? not being in the dead. Yep. But what is the perspective that parents should take? Not not necessarily, but what, in your eyes, everybody treats this like it's a D one scholarship type deal. D three doesn't do scholarships. Right. What would you say to some of these parents and, and to get them to, 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 to have perspective? Yeah, I mean, it's really about where can I have the best college wrestling experience. First and foremost, got to be the academic piece, right? Then the athletic piece, the coaching staffs, the facilities, the workout partners, the culture. And the third is the social piece. And if you want the perfect balance. So again, it's got to be about the fit. Where can I have the best college wrestling experience that's affordable, right? And then a place that's got a proven track record of launching careers in those fields of studies. The athletic piece is, it, you know, the coaches, the workout partners. And then the third piece is the social piece, a place that's fun, a place that's happy. Um, you know, and I think about what I would tell parents is when you're around those coaches, when you're around those athletes, and when you're on those campuses, 
how are you how, how do you think feel and act when you're around those people and that, that's what you talk about fit that's how you measure fit everybody says i want to go some place where it's the right fit well that's how you do it and i think you know division two II, division three um you know it's a place like bw if you're serious about year-round opportunities to get better at wrestling and year-round opportunities to launch your career uh man it could be a great fit D2 and D3 in Ohio is always growing at that level. You know, uh, Hiram, about 15 minutes yeah. from my house, just yeah. added, right? Uh, That's awesome. You know, and you look, uh, obviously what Notre Dame College has done in a decade is pretty incredible. Um, you know, 13 years or however old they are, you know, Lake Erie College. You know, the list goes on and on, and it continues to grow tipping what they've done in the D2 level. You know, we pay attention. Uh, Rio is down there in NAI, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They added, right? So, I mean, we're always growing, right? We're always growing in the D2 and the D3 level. Is it the future of college wrestling? Well, man, I hope not. And I, and I say that in, in, a, in a positive way. I hope we just grow in both Division One, Division Two, and Division Three. But yeah, realistically, that could be the case. Could be the case. There's some exciting things going on right now with all these, uh, you know, side cards. So I think that's great for our sport. So. Um, it's been, obviously, there's some trying times or some painful times right now, but I think there's some good things that I'm hoping can build some momentum and take the, the sport to a place that it hasn't gone before and, and continue to grow in popularity and get more and more athletes out and more and more uh, at the youth level, you know, continue to grow our sport. You know, youth level, you got an 8 and 11 year old. When do you have, when, when do you figure out about, you know, I asked Clinton Muscle this about specialization. I don't believe in specialization. I went to Oak Harbor High School. It's a very small yeah, no. school, right? Um, I feel like you should you should do all three of the sports. Well, my dad told me you're either going to play a sport or work, so that made that easy, right? Right. Which you're putting way more hours into the sport if you're going to be any good at it than you were at any part time job. But um, specialization. When do you start having the conversations with your boys about? Hey, we're going to do this. Hey, we're going to do that. Hey, you can focus on this. Hey, let's try this. You know, when does that conversation occur for you? For us, it'll be a while. Right now, my kids do gymnastics year-round. They play baseball. They play football. Um, I think it's part of that athletic pyramid, a great foundation, uh, keeping them well-rounded and and, uh, and 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 just well-balanced, you know. And, and then uh, I think more when they get in higher levels, junior high, high school, maybe then. But man, I, I don't know. I think. Uh, I think for every family, it's a little bit different, but you know, for us, we want to continue to, you 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 know, utilize that athletic pyramid and, and dabbling in all the sports. Uh, I got a three and a four year old. We go to Kenston for all of our stuff, and it's Coach fun. Varney. Varney's the man. BW grad. Oh man, he's a BW, BW guy. Yeah, yeah, awesome guy. Uh, he got me into it, and you know, really drew my kids out into it. And um, I can take it or leave it. I'm like, you know, whatever. Good. Just go. You know what I mean? Like, go do it. One kid's a goofball, other guy's the opposite, right? Well, to me as a dad, what, what's I'm, this is like real. I don't. I can turn the camera off and have this conversation. Yeah. But, but what advice do you have for me to like just keep them engaged and make it fun for them? Buddies. It's all about the buddies. Got to find buddies that uh, you know that love to do it as well. Um, I, I think you know kids they they gravitate towards their buddies. So if their buddies are doing it, they're gonna do it. But I don't care if it's swimming, basketball, football their buddies are doing it you know that they're gonna they're gonna want to keep with it and keep it in fun it's funny that you say that because there's a jeffrey varney who my kids love yeah. they love jeffrey they don't call him jeffrey jeffrey they call you know and, and he's like a lot like jeff but an awesome cute little kid and he loves wrestling right and so they you know by jeffrey it draws them into it right and you got to do cool things around these yeah. competitions man around the practices you got to make it fun for them and do cool things I love it. Buddies, yeah. Jeffrey. It's all about the buddies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Agreed. Okay. I don't, I don't think, you know, whatever sport it is. So. Okay. Do you got anything else for me? No, I appreciate all you guys do, man. I appreciate the coverage. Let's continue to grow wrestling. Okay. Million dollar questions coming at you. Ready? Million dollar question. Are you? All right. I, I already got a pretty good idea. Are you a body wash man or are you a bar man? Which one are you? Both. You're both? They're, they're both in my shower. Okay. You, you are here. They're so both in my shower, man. So both of these. Oh. You awesome. do both? I do both. I do both. You gave I don't I've, I've never seen the oatmeal stuff though. Well, you're going to get that. That's yours. Awesome. You gave the Charlie Agazino answer. You give the politician answer. The I don't answer. love your answer, 
but it's an answer nonetheless. But no, you do both and you got to rotate him. He's actually right with that answer. My, my wife's upstairs. You can ask her. We've got both in the shower, man. You're, you're rocking both. Yeah, we're rocking Miller both. boys get the oatmeal every night. It's a natural exfoliant. My boys just have the body wash, though, in, well, in their showers. Well, that's the new generation. Yeah. You're probably yeah. a bar man. Yeah, yeah. You're probably a bar yeah. man at heart, yeah? Probably, yeah. I mean, you're 30 plus years old. You're usually this, this a bar is, man. This is in the shower mostly because we travel. It's easy to throw in the, the travel bag, you know? I heard whistles going. Thank you for the time. Uh, let's actually talk and see if we can get maybe a duel this year. Let's do it. I appreciate it, right? Sounds good. Thank